Melitopelinology is one of the applied branches of palynology that deals with the study of pollen in honey. Melitopelinology or melisopelinology can thus be defined as the quantitative and qualitative analysis of palynoflora of honeys. The term melitopelinology is derived from the Greek words melita and melissa meaning a bee as well as honey. The Latin word mel or melis also means honey. Though the International Commission for Bee Research prefers the term melisopelinology involving the study of pollen in honey, conventionally majority of palynologists have been using the term melitopelinology. Honey bees collect pollen and nectar from flowers. This nectar is converted into the semi-digested heterogeneous product called honey with the help of diastase enzyme present in the gut of honeybee. The honey is stored in the honeycombs by the honeybees. Honey are of two types, extracted honey and squeezed honey. The first type of honey is obtained through centrifugation of the honey frames and the second type is obtained by pressing, the, pressing and squeezing portions of wild honeycomb. Honey vary in composition depending on the vegetation and agroclimatic conditions of the place from where the nectar is collected. There is a very close relationship between honey bee, honey and pollen which is referred as bee botany. Pollination is a well established fact. Bees and certain flowering plants have evolved a well adjusted system of interdependence that ensures mutual benefits. Establishment of this mutual relationship between the flowering plants and their pollinators is one of the relation one of the most significant events in organic evolution. Pollen analysis of honey is the most important aspect of melitopelinology. The assessment of the resource value of different plant species to bees is a major objective of melitopelinology. In order to study a sample of honey, it is diluted using distilled water, then it is centrifuged in order to separate pollen grains. After acetolysis and further centrifugation, the pollen grains are mounted on slides using jelly, wax, polyvinyl alcohols as medium. They are observed under microscope in order to know their shape, size, aperture, sporoderm, stratification and ornamentation. Pollen types are observed and photographs are taken. Finally, the palynotaxa is identified. The data obtained from the study of pollen sample shows whether the honey is unifloral or multifloral. From honey sample which are not acetolized, the ratio of honeydew elements and pollen grains of nectariferous plants may be obtained. Hemocytometer may be used in order to get the absolute pollen count that is APC of honey samples. Absolute pollen counts is the number of pollen grains per 10 gram of honey. Through physicochemical analysis of honey samples using standard methodologies, estimation of specific gravity, moisture content, ash value, total protein, amino acids, sugars, phenol and heavy metals are done. Melisopelinology provides information regarding geographical source of honey, source of nectar for foraging bees, purity of honey by APC and HDE per P, unifloral or multifloral nature of honey, identification of toxic and allergic honeys, role in crop pollination, honey flow period and honey honey dearth period which is required for running apiaries in an efficient and profitable way. Honeys containing pollens from plants known to be poisonous or toxic are unsafe for human consumption. Individuals oversensitive to certain pollen may show allergic reactions to honeys contaminated with these airborne pollens. Pollen analysis 
helps to identify such honeys. Pollen of Lasiosiphon species are not harmful to bees but honeys contaminated with these pollen are highly dangerous and poisonous for human consumption. In contrast, pollen of Euphorbia geniculata are highly toxic, almost lethal to bees but honeys contaminated with this pollen have no effect on human consumption. A close observation on the life of honey bees indicate that four natural resources such as water, raisins, nectar and pollen are required for survival of honey bees. Water is used to cool the hive and dilute honey fed to the larvae. Raisin reinforces the hive and plugs holes. Nectar serves as the major source of carbohydrates from which honey bees obtain their energy. Pollen is the major source of proteins, fat, minerals and vitamins for honey bees. It is estimated that a worker larva requires about 142 mg of honey for development and to make half a kg of honey, bees have to visit about 2 million flowers. On an average, one worker bee produces about half a teaspoon of honey in her lifetime.